Hello friends. Uh, in the last session, you have learned about photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis or respiration, both the uh, processes are actually dealing with the uh, chemical reactions which are taking place in a plant body just to produce the food or to utilize the food. So this is how you have learnt about the various reactions and now I think it's a time for you people or we people to uh, go out in the nature virtually. So we can have a typical uh, study of flower. Okay, we can enjoy that. Uh, just to understand what is flower, we need to understand uh, what are the uh, accessory words, which are the essential words, and how the flower is uh, constructed. Okay, so just to understand basic concepts of any flower, we have to have uh, an example for this. Okay. So this particular study, we are going to uh, finish with this particular species that is hibiscus. Hibiscus, just one does a food. So which is very common, it's a garden plant and uh, each one of you have seen this plant. Are you? Right. So I think let us begin with the technical part of this. Uh, this particular flower or inflorescence you can say it's a flower with some reproductive structure and a bract and uh, I think uh, I have labeled the things now let us uh, start with actual part again. so this is calyx which is usually green in color the corolla means petals okay so this is petal part so these are accessory ones let us think about the uh, essential words. What are essential words? Essential words are those uh, which uh, take part in the reproduction activity. Means male part and female part. This particular flower can be called as a bisexual flower because both the sexes are present in a single flower. Now, uh, let us think about the male reproductive system or male reproductive structure. So this is stamen with anther and filament. So this particular part is called as stamen. Similarly, um, female reproductive part uh, which is carpel. Female reproductive part carpel which is made up of stigma, style and ovary. Let me tell you in the beginning itself. Ovary, when uh, fertilization occurs, there are certain changes in the ovary. Ovary becomes fruit. What about seeds? Seeds are made up of, uh, uh, they are produced from the ovules. Let us think about the typical uh, lady finger. Have you seen lady finger? Do you like it? I like it very much. So, always remember when you take a section, then you will find five locules present vertically in a fruit. It's a fruit, it's a actual type of fruit. Okay, so this vertical chambers, locules, they contain number of seeds. <clears throat> so practically we are going to learn the things, but let me tell you in the beginning itself, each locule contains some seeds. So, so arrangements are like this. So these are nothing but the seeds in matured fruit, that is the fertilized fruit or ready fruit we can say. In the beginning, when we consider a simple flower, when it is uh, not showing any fertilization stage, so before more maturity, uh, there is a continuous process of uh, development and in this process, ovary contains uh, several locules. In this particular case, in case of hibiscus, that is jasmine, so there are five locules, pentalocular ovary. The terminology is pentalocular ovary. So this ovary uh, has five locules and locule contains ovules. So ovules are the particular site, okay, where pollen grain allow uh, pollen tube to enter and further fertilization process occurs. I think uh, most of you have studied this particular part in your 
standard 9 or standard 10 right so let us revise things stigma style ovary stigma are the uh, receptive receptive plates we can say which are sticky by nature where pollen grains which are uh, liberated from the salmon that is specifically the anther lobe we can say anther and this is filament <coughs> so after dehiscence of anther the pollen grains are liberated and uh, with the help of insect so there should be some pollinator so with the help of insect the pollen grains get shifted to another uh, flower or uh, stigma of another flower so then they start formation of uh, pollen tube ultimately pollen tube uh, travels through the stylar canal and it reaches to the uh, ovule where egg cell is available and male gametes further they uh, fuse with the uh, egg cell and they form a uh, zygote then it further develops into embryo and this is how the uh, seed setting takes place so these are the uh, certain events which are there in any normal life cycle of angiosperm okay i think uh, we can uh, have uh, better pictures about this so we can start with uh, a little pause so look at this picture a typical plant uh, entire plant with the flower uh, let us think about the flower on the flower androecium that is male reproductive system gynoecium female reproductive part and the leaves and the bud and the branches stem roots so this is a typical uh, representation of any flowering plant let us have a uh, look at a typical bird condition so this is a typical bird uh, you know, don't worry about uh, epicalyx and pedicel simply uh, think about how this uh, particular bird is originating and this is bract a supportive uh, leaf structure which is present uh, along with the bud okay so this is a typical bud structure huh. let us have a look at androecium we are talking about uh, essential essential floral buds which uh, take part actively in a reproduction process so this is androecium and uh, this part you can consider gynoecium entire part so androecium anthers then uh, anthers are with uh, anther lobes and filament uh, similarly uh, you can uh, look at stigma and a style uh, I would like to share one thing that uh, we are considering this particular picture just as a uh, beginning part of this chapter okay after this particular explanation we will be switching to the demo table because we are going to actually we are going to dissect the uh, hibiscus flower and definitely we are going to uh, look at how anthers are arranged how uh, uh, stigma style and ovary appears there in a real flower because you people at your home can definitely dissect a flower you can make a picture and you can share it uh, with us for uh, uh, as a sample we'll share one picture of a dissected flower and it is shared by uh, one of your seniors okay so let us continue with this so this is androecium gynoecium uh, typical parts corolla that is petals and these are the sepals means calyx and epicalyx ovary everything you can see here uh, let us continue with first I think uh, so this part is anther part we are considering so after dehiscence dehiscence of anther pollen grains they come out so pollen grains of this particular hibiscus species are spiny so these are the spiny pollen grains 
Uh, don't worry about the uh, meiosis process and how the Polangarians are produced. We are going to learn that. But uh, basically, think about how pollen grain appears. So it appears spiny, spiny in nature. So the outer covering, outer covering of uh, pollen grain is called as exine, and the uh, inner covering, inner coat which is present, that is called as entine. So just for a passing reference, I am mentioning uh, these names. So this is spiny exine. And this is a typical pollen grain of hibiscus. Let us have another picture for um, female reproductive part that is gynoecium of hibiscus. So this is stigma, then stigma they form a long stylar canal through which the pollen tube passes and this is a typical ovary region. Ovary it contains Ovules once again. So, in this typical case of hibiscus, the ovary is with five lockings, five chambers in simple words. Pentalocular ovary or ovary with five chambers, you can say. So, this is thalamus. So, ovary is placed on a thalamus, it's a cup like structure. Once again, stigma, style, and ovary. Let us have a section for ts of hibiscus ovary can you see the structure it's a beautiful structure um, i think uh, you may get confused just to avoid your confusion let me help you with uh, parallel diagrams So this is ovary and we are taking a section and this section is appearing here. Are you getting a point? So this is a locule means chamber, then ovules, then central axis or a central axis which bears the ovule which provides a firm support to the ovule. Uh, then wall of the ovary, the outer wall of the ovary. So this is the wall. So this is TS, transverse section. You are watching the things uh, vertically and this entire structure is actual ovary. Okay. So I think uh, we can have a pause here and we can switch to the actual demonstration table. So uh, we have learnt about various uh, parts of a typical hibiscus plant. So let us have a sample now. Uh, this is entire twig okay, where you can find uh, a fully grown hibiscus flower. Hibiscus flower attached to the uh, mother axis we can say or a twig we can say uh, with the help of uh, pedicel. We have removed. We will keep this twig aside. Uh, let us have a close look at this particular structure. Uh, so this entire flower, you can easily uh, identify this is bract, okay. Uh, these are epicalyx, these are the uh, uh, sepals, these are the petals. In other words, you can say this is calyx, this is corolla. Or these are sepals, these are petals, okay. Uh, and this particular part, I, I, I'll show it here. So this is more suitable for uh, each one of you to observe. Uh, this particular structure, a knob-like structure at end, one, two, three, four, five. So these are the uh, stigmas, okay. Then this small uh, uh, lollipop like structures which are protruding out from a, a single tube like structure these are nothing but the uh, uh, male part that is anther lobes along with the filaments okay so this is male and reproductive male reproductive system and female reproductive system both the things are together so let us now uh, have a look at this particular picture 
so this particular picture we have learned uh, root system stem then the branches then the leaves and ultimately a flowering branch so it appears like this so this is a flowering branch where uh, birds are produced and then uh, there is a typical formation of uh, blooming of flower along with uh, formation of uh, uh, male reproductive part female reproductive part and uh, the accessory parts yes here you can observe the bud okay after this picture we can have a typical picture for general flower morphology we are not going to learn each and everything in detail now but this is your foundation course and being uh, in a foundation course and uh, learning or revising the things in a better manner you should uh, recall the various terminologies so this is a typical section this is vertical section vs so it passes through a typical flower you cannot uh, expect a symmetry uh, uh, or uh, you cannot expect a typical symmetry here okay so this particular structure may confuse you but if you look at this structure you can easily find this is pedicel a stalk like structure we can holding this then this is thalamus then um, um, this is sepal that is calyx and this is uh, petal yes that is corolla then uh, calyx corolla androsium that is anther filament means a stamen the male reproductive part and carpel that is pistil so it is made up of stigma style and ovary so this particular stigma where the pollen grains are liberated and ultimately they form a pollen tube and pollen tube passes through a stylar canal and it reaches to the ovule now try to recall a typical uh, diagram i think uh, it is not with me but uh, in later session we can have a look because uh, in your books uh, many times it is shown that a typical uh, uh, stylar canal is present the stigma disc, disc is present and a stylar canal through which the pollen tube passes and a typical anatropous type of ovule is present inverted type of ovule is present and the pollen tube reaches to the excel and it forms uh, it, fertil it shows a fertilization and after fertilization it shows formation of uh, zygote embryo and further it over it develops into a fruit and fertilized ovule develops into a seed so this particular structure which you can see there in your board books is a simple ovule a single locular ovule it is not like that so as we have seen this particular structure of stigma that is pentalocular ovary so it's a common thing so many locules are present uh, in a uh, many locules are present in a single ovary and each locule can be filled with uh, single ovule or double ovule and depends how uh, variety develops itself in a nature okay so this is a typical uh, picture for uh, diagrammatic representation of uh, accessory words as well as uh, essential words okay now uh, we'll consider this uh, particular picture later so after this let us have a look at typical uh, photograph we have seen this this is bud and this in young condition this part green part is called as calyx this is calyx and these are the corolla what is corolla corolla means petals so petals are always colorful just to attract the um, insects for pollination because this particular structure reproductive structure uh, it undergoes cross pollination so there are a uh, number of uh, anther lobes are present and after dehiscence a pollen shower beautiful yellow colored or golden color pollen shower occurs and uh, this particular yellow dust is uh, uh, getting attached to the body surface of any insect which shows hairy nature of a skin or you can say hairy nature of a body 
and uh, thereby the things are getting transferred to the another flower and ultimately uh, the pollination occurs and further fertilization process occurs. So these are the petals which attracts any pollinator, especially insects. Okay, so this is a typical uh, bud condition with a bract that we have seen. This is elongated portion because this particular structure is well developed. Okay, now we can have another picture for anther. We are revising these things once again. So this is reniform anther. Reni means renal, renal system, renal portal vein means anything which is related to kidney that is renal. So this is reniform which resembles its structure with kidney structure or, or externally. Okay. So this is filament. So reniform anther and this is a typical uh, 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 staminal tube which is formed by a uh, number of uh, anthers and these are the anthers which are attached to the uh, staminal tube with the filament and this is how the structure is overall present this is stigma once again sigma style and ovary a typical structure of anther you are well aware about this particular arrangement so this is filament this is uh, these are anther lobes and this is connective so when you cut open this this particular uh, anther lobe shows presence of uh, either two chambers or four chambers so it is in the multiple of uh, two okay uh, usually it, you should remember this Once again, these are the pollen grains, spiny exine, okay, and lastly, let us have a look at or I can show it like this only. So, this is uh, typically uh, stigma, style, and ovary. And yes, we are going to dissect this flower in this particular fashion. Okay, are you ready? So let us begin with actual dissection. Now, so this is the most interesting work uh, which I always enjoy to dissect a flower in a very nice way. So here I am trying to separate, here I am trying to separate a calyx let us see whether I am successful or not, yes. So this is a crown like structure, this is a crown like structure. So this is nothing but the calyx or you can say sepals, calyx or sepals, okay. Now these are the petals, petals always remember they are arranged in a twisted fashion. There are so many uh, types of uh, estivations, so this arrangement of petals and sepals on a thalamus is called as estivation, estivation. Uh, anyhow you can pronounce it uh, so this is a typical uh, uh, twisted type of estivation and estivation always remember is better observable in bud condition uh, so I'll remove the typical structure and hopefully I should not uh, cut the ovary and my cut should not be deep so that easily I can uh, remove the hopefully I have not 
cut the even if I tear off the petal it is okay because we are we should remove the things uh, we can have a close up for this how the things are getting removed yeah look at a typical uh, venetian type and always remember when we say a flower is a modified shoot flower is a modified shoot means once upon a time this particular structure was acting as a leaf it was green in color and just to have a sexual reproduction just to have crossing over just to have uh, multiple uh, uh, varieties of a single flower the things are getting modified so this is how the petals are also showing the traces of leaves see the venetians are there beautiful venetian you can easily observe and this is reticular type of venetian oh by mistake i have dissected Can you see this? Is it observable? For our better understanding, what I'll do, I'll simply remove the petals. I'm removing a petal. Okay. So So this is how the petals are separated. I'm keeping them uh, away from this particular structure. And let me tell you, once I remove it successfully, you can easily observe yes now this is the entire structure yes now we can have a, a, a look at this fantastic thing it is so this is the most beautiful creation of nature so this particular uh, crown like structure which is present at tip is uh, nothing but the uh, male reproductive system and female reproductive system once again so these are the stigma this is Tyler canal so I'll show you the canal don't worry and uh, here will be the ovary now let's trace out a typical Tyler canal hmm? oh, sir, you can have a close look on this because um, I think uh, hopefully I can cut down the things so this will help us a lot to get the entire styler canal So the thing which I am uh, cutting now is nothing but the staminal tube. So it's a tube which is formed by many stamens. So easily you can observe many stamens are here. And wish me luck. Okay, fantastic it is. Now I can. Uh, say the things with more confidence that uh, we have successfully uh, taken out male reproductive part 
separate from the female reproductive part. So let us finish with this particular structure. So you can have a close look and you can, uh, students, you can uh, focus on the needle point. So these are the anthers. So these are the anthers which are attached to the original staminal tube with the filament. There are so many tubes and filaments are present. You can easily observe. So, so this is a fantastic thing. In the shadow, even in the shadow, you can observe the things. Okay. So this is male reproductive system. And this is a female reproductive part. Stigma. This is a styler canal. So big it is. And it is getting connected to the ovary. Stigma, style, ovary. Style forms a canal like structure. Hence, it is called as styler canal. So, better this can be observed on a black paper. So, purposefully, we are arranging the things in a better manner. Yes. So it's a beautiful thing which you can observe. This is Styler Canal and uh, ah, great. Uh, Kasub sir, can you focus the things more if possible? Because I know there are certain limitations of camera, but no issues. Uh, still, the things are quite uh, observable. So this pollen dust are nothing but the pollen grains. So this yellow dust is nothing but the pollen grains. I'm not able to uh, uh, separate them, but still you can observe those yellow structures. They are dehized one. These are open one, and the things are uh, getting deposited on the stigma disc. So you can observe uh, compared to uh, the other uh, structures. The stigma disc is more. Uh, showing the presence of pollen grains because they secrete sucrose solution and which is sticky by nature and this particular solution helps uh, pollen, pollen grain to form a pollen tube and pollen tube it has uh, male gametophyte and we are going to learn that thing also okay so this is the overall structure okay then uh, we can have a close look at ovary. So this structure is ovary. Okay. This is ovary. And now we can have uh, a section for this. Okay. Uh, we can have a small pause just to arrange the things. So this is Tyler Canal and we need to uh, remove it just to have a section. Okay. So this is a sharp blade with which we can take a section and uh, I'm sorry, I'm removing the things. Yes, I'm keeping the things aside. Let us have a section. Oh, look at the locules. I'll hold the things Kausup sir and if possible Please try to focus. Yes, you can observe the locules. So these are the locules, means chambers, which contain ovules. I, what I will do? I'll just press these locules. Don't worry, I can show you the uh, section of a typical ovary by dissecting another flower. So we have a glass slide with us. So purposely I'll put it on a black paper so that it will help you to uh, observe the ovules there are so many ovules so don't worry that if your book is showing uh, a, a typical uh, 
a single ovule for uh, diagrammatic representation so definitely uh, the book setter book uh, writer they have certain limitations and definitely they cannot show all the things in a 3d manner so let us have the things on a slide now I'll separate out the things so these are the ovules and not uh, um, separating each one of them because this particular Malvasi family this Rosa, Rosa uh, hibiscus rosa sinensis means jaswant plant belongs to family malvesi and uh, these are the ovules look at these structures very beautiful structures so this particular one seed like thing is nothing but the ovule it is not a seed when ovule get fertilized it forms a seed and whatever the ovary was present initially here on the thalamus so this ovary will uh, transform itself into a fruit developed fruit so these are the ovules have a close look enjoy this and try to understand how the things are there um, we can have a typical uh, section of ovary and yes uh, definitely uh, we can have a small pause to arrange the things so let us have a section for uh, typical locules okay so i'm using a blade and i have uh, uh, removed the other floral verse of another flower another hibiscus flower and uh, now i'm taking a section look at the things carefully and yes at home you can try out with this sectioning but uh, be careful uh, you should not cut your fingers with a sharp blade after all you are a person who is going to be who is going to be there in a medical college after two years so you should be very careful with yourself then and then you will be able to take care of other people yes beautiful sections we are taking and we are going to use a small drop of water just to keep the sections moist okay so this is the best way to keep the section fresh i'm sorry okay let's try out with some more sections so taking section is a matter of practice only so uh, you need not to worry much so let us have a close look under a microscope for this particular section so let us have a close look at uh, the locules and how the ovules are arranged in the locule so the thing which you are observing now is nothing but a section of a ovary okay 
so it's a section of ovary and you are observing a section through sliderscope so this uh, particular uh, microscope like thing or magnifying uh, instrument will be shown to you uh, after this particular uh, uh, section okay so let us uh, have a close look yes you can observe the locules uh, you can count the locules you can count the ovules the small seed like structures which you can observe are nothing but the uh, these are nothing but the ovules and ultimately when pollen tube will reach to the locule or near to the ovule the ovule will get fertilized okay so this is a typical section so this was a slide and this was a typical sliderscope and what i did i simply put this slide into this and i leave it so this was a typical structure and through which we were observing uh, a typical uh, section of ovule uh, sorry section of ovary where, where we could observe uh, various ovules okay uh, now we are going to continue with the fertilized fruit fertilized ovule or developed fruit or ripened ovary anything anything you can call it so let us have a lady finger just to expedite the things i have already dissected one thing let me tell you i'm going to cut this particular uh, lady finger let us have a section first so these are the locules 1 2 3 4 5 these are the locules this is central axis or uh, uh, placenta where the seeds are attached now understand the things carefully so this was a typical ovule now it has become a seed because this is nothing but a typical grown or ripened ovary so this is a fruit fruit contains seed now originally this was ovule so let us uh, dissect the things once again for uh, your better understanding so i'll have straight one so let us have a cut yes we can yes we can have a close look at overall arrangement of fruit so this lady finger okra or bindi it belongs to family malvesi so you can easily observe a stickiness while cutting this fruit chopping this fruit hope uh, this intact thing I'll be able to show you
once again you can uh, perform all these practicals at home so what are practicals practicals are nothing but the uh, uh, actual feeling of science so just to have clear cut clear cut idea about how the things are there in nature we are performing practicals yes in case of uh, plants we can easily uh, procure samples and easily we can perform practicals in case of animals it is a uh, little um, impossible and there are certain uh, uh, laws so we have to follow the laws and now we can have a look at uh, various um, seeds which are arranged in a specific fashion on this central axis that's, that is placenta and if uh, closely if you observe the things uh, so are you able to focus on this Kausup sir? So these uh, brown structures okay so these brown structures are nothing but the unfertilized ovules so these are the fertilized ovules means now they have become an independent seed and this particular structure is nothing but the typical unfertilized ovule so just to show you I'll use forcep I will remove them I can collect them and I can put them here on a white surface where you can observe the things now do you are you able to recall the structure of typical hibiscus ovule so yes we can uh, we can show you both the things these are the hibiscus ovules which are not fertilized yet okay and these are the uh, in a white plate uh, these are the ovules of a typical uh, lady finger okra or bindi plant bindi flower uh, which are unfertilized if you compare these unfertilized with fertilized one then you will find these are present they are not showing any uh, um, uh, development and there is no chance of getting fertilized after formation of uh, several seeds and after ripening of the ovary that is formation of fruit so this is how the things are there in nature uh, so i think uh, we have done with this uh, small demo and we are going to learn about how things are there with flowers how uh, anthers mature how stigma mature how ovary is uh, receptive uh, to uh, show further changes in the structure and how it allows a pollen tube to enter up to the egg which is to be fertilized in an ovule so typical ovule structure we are going to learn and I think uh, in your uh, syllabus uh, up to 10 standard uh, anatropous type of ovule the ovule which was inverted and pollen tube used to travel like this so this was a typical structure okay we have learned this uh, we are going to learn uh, uh, fertilization process and then development and how the seeds are formed we are going to learn okay till then you revise the things and uh, we will be uh, starting with uh, actual sexual reproduction in angiosperms in the next session.